I finally got my hands on a set of irons that I've been drooling for since they were announced in the fall. These are the Mizuno 245s. If you know me, you know that I'm kind of a Mizuno fanboy. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form, but I've just had an affinity for Mizuno irons. I first had the Tezoids, I then had the MP33 blades. I had the first hot metal forged. My most recents were the MP20 HMBs, and these are the grandchildren of those MP20 HMBs. This is a player's distance iron. It's actually a hollow body design, but it looks just like a blade. And we're going to test today, does it feel like a blade? Does it feel like a Mizuno? Because that's why you buy Mizuno irons for that forged feel. This club being a multi-material construction, can we get that same feel? We're also going to test for the other factors that I test for, which are distance, forgiveness, workability, value, and of course, aesthetics. And uh, by the looks of them, aesthetics-wise, these things are going to be pretty darn good. Let's take a little deeper look at the technology behind these clubs, and then we're going to take them out here on course at Carrollwood Country Club and put them to the test. Here is that beautiful 7-iron. Now, if that doesn't look like a blade, I don't know what does. You can see how They've really moved the mass down here. But what you don't see is that inside of the two through seven iron, you've actually got a floating tungsten weight, which is laser welded into a slot and it's kind of floating in place. And that's gonna help promote getting more lift out of these irons in the irons that you need to do that, of course, the two through seven irons. Now, when you get into the eight, nine pitching wedge and gap wedge, it removes that weight. In those irons, you don't necessarily need the lift because the loft provides the lift and you're just gonna be left with a hollow cavity there. Now the sole of this club has nice middle of the road width. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. I think that's really good looking. Here's the seven iron at address. As you can see the top line, really nice. I mean, it's definitely thicker than the 243s and the 241s are gonna be. But uh, in terms of a player's distance iron, something that has a hollow body cavity to it, pretty dang good. Long width from heel to toe. It's also pretty deep looking as well. So. I feel really confident standing over this club. I think you will too. There's your nine iron. That face looks nice and big and inviting, doesn't it? Here's your shot at the five iron down at a dress. You're not gonna see the backside of that club. You may just catch a little of it on the four iron, but that's nice and clean. Again, big face, not a ton of top line. It's a beautiful looking club. It would fool a lot of people into thinking that it was a blade. Now on these clubs, I've got a nice heavy shaft. I've got the dynamic gold 120 gram stiff shaft. You gotta swing this thing, but uh, don't be scared of that 120 gram weight. Sometimes a heavier club actually helps you get it through the ball a little bit faster. All right, I'm stepping up to a par three. It's gonna play about 145. It should be the perfect distance for my nine iron. Oh yeah, that's nice. That is just a little left of the pin. And that carried a very long way. Let's go take a look at that one. Now that strike wasn't perfect, but that was an incredible result. We're actually past the pin here, and we've probably got 15 feet, maybe less, maybe 13 feet here for a birdie. Okay, I'm standing out here at 165. We've got seven iron in hand. Gosh, it's a beautiful looking club. Let's see what we do. Wow, I can't believe that covered because I hit that one off the toe of this club and it just goes to the forgiveness that's built into this 245. And that's what you're gonna need because this is a club that's not made for pure ball strikers. It's made for good ball strikers, but not elite ball strikers. That's the category of club I'm shopping all the time because while I do hit a lot of center contact, I often miss towards the toe and down at the bottom. And by shifting the weight down there in the club, getting that extra floating tungsten weight in there, that's gonna be much more forgiving, especially on those thin and toe shots. Here's a shot where I'd like to play a little bit of a fade. I've got 160 to an elevated pin, and I wanna see how workable this seven iron in the 245 series is, because we know 241, 243 are gonna be as workable as they come, but how do we do with this one? Yeah, we do pretty darn good. In fact, I overcooked that, hit at the top of the green there, and we actually went off to the right. The turf interaction, really nice with this club. Now I know I actually have to start this off further to the left than I would have guessed. Oh yes, and I still 
it's going to end up right side of the green, maybe even off the green. Normally hitting that type of shot, I have a little bit of a kind of a baby fade, but these clubs, they've got the performance of a player's iron from what I can tell so far. One more. I'm not going to exaggerate it as much as those first two. There we go, and that's perfect. So yeah. That's perfect. Distance is great too. Very impressive with the workability factor of these clubs. Now I overcooked those first two, and the third one even finished right side of the green, and it's just because I didn't expect to get that much workability, that much movement out of a club in this category. If I didn't know better, I would have guessed I was hitting a blade. That's how much those things were moving. So in the workability department, these things are gonna be way up there. I'm standing here at the back tees. We're 176 of the pin. I'm gonna hit this five iron that I'm gonna unwrap here. It'll be my first shot with it. And gosh, again, just a beautiful look to this club. Looking down at a dress, you see really just a hint maybe of the muscle back portion of this club, but really nothing. At the four iron, you're probably gonna see just a little bit of the backside of this club, but so clean. This is the spot in the bag you've gotta have a lot of forgiveness in the four, five irons, even the six iron. Let's see how we do here. I've got to carry it a long way because there's a bunker right in front, in front of that pin. Oh, it felt good. Boy, it got up in the air high. Very high. Is it going to be enough? Yeah. Whoa. I'm in the back portion of that green. I just didn't think I could get there today in these morning kind of dewy conditions. That felt so good coming off the club face. That's at the back of this green. I covered that bunker with absolutely no problem. I hit that pretty well in the center. I'll take another one here because, boy, that felt good. <laughs> Let's see if it was a fluke or if it's the real deal. That one I hit low. Is that one gonna get there? Low on the club face, I mean, yes. The forgiveness at the bottom of these clubs is absolutely exceptional. In this category, player's distance irons, it could be, could be one of the best I've ever felt, honestly. Just incredible. Today I've hit a few off the toe with some irons. I've hit a number of shots low, and I'm still getting plenty of carry. That could have been really dangerous with the bunker in front of me, and I got over that no problem. I just continue to be impressed with these 245s. These could be the perfect player iron. Can we just give the Mizuno engineers a break here for a couple years? Just don't bother. It's not going to get any better. That's how I feel right now. Approaching this green from the side, just so you get a good idea of how far those went. Here's one in the middle of the green, one towards the back of the green. I mean, I covered that bunker no problem. Here's our distance. 189. Hopefully you see that on the watch. 189 here. That was a little low off the club face, but this is the one off the center of the club face. That's 198. There's not some gust of wind behind me. It's pretty calm. You can see the flag stick right here. I don't hit many 197, 198, five irons. I don't know about you. I'm really impressed with the distance. The one thing I want to test here next is spin, especially in the seven and nine irons. I want to make sure that we're not sacrificing stopping power in the name of distance. That's always something you got to watch out for when you come to clubs that have a little bit more press lofts. I'm out here at 170 yards. I've got seven iron in hand, and what I'm gonna test here is really stopping power. We can have as much distance as we want, but if we can't stop the ball, if we can't hold greens, these clubs don't do us a whole lot of good. So let's see what we do here. Ooh, again, nice high trajectory. It's going right at the flag. Second shot here. Oh yes, that was really nice. Just a little left of the pin. Let's go find where those ended up. By eye, it looks like they did roll out a little more than I would like to see. Now, again, it is the morning. I totally understand that. And we're not gonna get as much of stopping power as we're gonna get on a dry day. But I test a lot of golf clubs out here and we should be able to hold the green with that shot from back there. So let's see what happens. All right, the good news is we've got two balls on the green. Now they are towards the back of the green, so I'd love to see the pitch marks here. One was just a little right, and where are we? Yeah, I think it's right here. 
I think we landed right in here, counting this out, six, nine, 12, 15, let's call it 17 feet. Let's find the other pitch mark here. The other pitch mark is right here, okay? And we rolled out three, six, nine, 12, 15, 16 feet. So 16 and 17 feet respectively. I'm gonna fix these pitch marks before I leave the green. I would say good, but maybe not exceptional in terms of stopping power with these clubs. So with these press lofts, you're gonna get tons of distance, all the distance you could possibly want, but it may come with a little price to pay there in terms of spin and in terms of stopping power. Still, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with these clubs right now. All right, we're 135 out, nine iron in hand. Again, we're testing not only, not only distance, but also stopping power. It's up, it's a little red to target. It looked to stop very, very well. One thing that Mizuno did here is in the nine pitching wedge and gap, there is no floating tungsten weight, meaning they didn't need to move weight down in order to help you get the ball up in the air because the club at this loft is gonna do it on its own. And in fact, if you wanna play good golf, you probably wanna flight your shots a little lower. That's what we're getting here out of this nine iron. That was a great result. Let's see if we can do it again. Oh yeah. Huh. Very similar to the last shot I just hit. They're gonna be right next to each other. And whoo, it feels good coming off the face. If I didn't know better, I would think this is a fully forged muscle back iron because that's how it seems to behave. That's how it seems to feel. I really like what I'm seeing here. Oh yeah. Probably my best one. That one's just a little left of the pin. But let's go see how those ended up. Again, we'll take a look at the pitch marks and see where they rolled out to. This looks good, guys. I love seeing balls that are pin high, first of all. And these first two are. That one I said I hit really well back there. It's ended up, but let's see how they rolled out. Okay, here's one pitch mark here. This was our first shot, I believe. And that rolled out three six, six and a half feet basically, we'll call it. That's with a nine iron again. Here's our second shot, actually a little less rollout. In fact, to me, this looks like just about a yard, three feet, maybe three and a half of rollout here. So good numbers. Last one here, this one was really well struck in the middle of the club face. And we did get more rollout here. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 17 feet, we're gonna call that one. So. Again, a little more than I like to see. These greens are a little bit drier now too as this day has gone on progressing. So I think that's the one thing these clubs maybe, now having that lower trajectory, not being as high up in the air, you're gonna get a little less downward angle descent. And I think that's probably why we're getting a little bit more roll out here. If there's any chink in the armor of these 245s, I'd say maybe they lack just a touch of spin. It's not earth shattering in any way. These clubs are fantastic in so many ways and there's just no perfect club out there. And if someone says there's a perfect club, they're absolutely lying to you. Every club is gonna have pros and cons. When the cons can be pretty good, like the spin numbers here, I think we can really celebrate the pros. And I've gotta say, this is one of the best performing clubs, maybe the best in the player's distance category that I've tried. It's got basically everything. Let me break down my final rankings and we're gonna score this club. So if you've ever watched this show, you know I like to score clubs on five categories. First category is gonna be distance and these clubs get a resounding five out of five stars here from me. These are about the longest clubs in this category I've ever played. In terms of forgiveness, we're gonna go with another five out of five. These things are so forgiving, especially on those thin hits and those ones towards the toe. They went just about as long as the ones I hit in the center and it still felt really good. It felt like I was hitting a fully forged club, incredible. In terms of workability, you probably guess it, but another five out of five stars. These clubs worked too much for me. In the player's distance category, often clubs lack that workability because they have that little more built-in forgiveness, not these clubs. I could move those balls left and right on command. I could also flight my shots the way I wanted them. Excellent, excellent. So we're doing pretty good so far. In terms of aesthetics, how could you not say five out of five? I mean, there's not a club manufacturer that does it any better than Mizuno. They are so beautiful. These clubs remind me of the Mizuno blades of old and new. They just keep getting better and better. 
perfect mark so far. The last category is value. And for value, this is where we're gonna fall just a little short. I'm gonna go three out of five. These aren't crazy expensive. And for the technology that's packed inside, I think they offer very good value, but they're not gonna be the cheapest clubs on the rack. In fact, you've seen me here on this show with some direct-to-consumer brands that are priced considerably less, but there's something to be said for that Mizuno name. I do think clubs like these are going to last and stand the test of time. I think the quality and the manufacturing over the decades that Mizuno Golf has been doing it, I'd say that speaks for itself. So apart from value, these clubs could be the perfect player's distance clubs. They are just as good as golf clubs get. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other videos, our other reviews, and I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.